Welcome back to Keith Cabin's Repair and Restoration. We've got the old dog back, and it's been a pretty good truck for the most part, but she's developed a bit of a growl. And, uh, pretty sure it's the water pump doing it. I don't know if you can hear that kind of crunchy noise. But when we tested the water pump, you can rock the pulley back and forth. There's a good chance the bearing's making that crunchy noise. I didn't diagnose this, I just have a repair order to do water pump. We got another issue going on. Uh, radiator's clogged up. And even though she's had great maintenance with the factory coolant, we found one thing with Dodge is that the radiators get clogged, you start running hot, not overheating, but hotter than normal. Now you want to see this engine run about 203 on a summer day, you don't want to see like 225, it's way too hot for these things. And even though this thing has electric fan, has a fan clutch, even with those two things running, we're bottlenecking heat in the engine, we're not dissipating heat out. And if you take an infrared gun, you can actually find that the bottom of the radiator will be hotter than the top. Why is that? Half your radiator's clogged, all your heat's having to travel all the way down to get out, to get cooled going back in, and it's just not enough cooling. So we got a lot to do today, stay tuned. All right, when I was recording the fan clutch removal, it didn't come out very good. It's just very tight to uh, record. So, in a pinch, you need two tools. You can, well, three. You can buy the Leslie tool, and I'll put the picture up that now. Uh, that's what we use now. But before we have that tool, this is the other way we used to do them. You need self monkey wrench, plumber's wrench, and an extension. Just a little one. One that's solid, though, right? So you're going to come in underneath the vehicle. You're going to put this in. Okay, you're going to pin it. What's going to happen when you go to take it off? going to stop this from moving. Very important that doesn't move. And then from here, you're going to get yourself a pipe wrench and get on there. Okay, and you're going to pop it off to driver's side. Okay, you tightening the passengers, removal from drivers. And that's pretty much it. And then pretty much removal from there. This is the original fan clutch when we bought the truck. It was in there. So, but that's it. You got to pin it. This don't move. Pop it through driver's side. And what I mean by that, while it's installed like this, you're going to pop it and go just like that. And you can see which way the nut is moving. Okay, that is the removal. Now, from basically 2009 through 19. Now, I do know at some point um, they did go electric fan, so you may not have a fan clutch, but if you do have the fan clutch, this is how it's done. All right, so I'm kind of doing my own diagnostics here. You know, I take the word of someone fine, but unless you actually see it hands-on, you know, it is what it is. I don't know if the camera can pick it up, but this pulley is clearly clearly moving back and forth the other thing is this tensioner is weak like I can easily spin the belt so what I'm gonna do I'm gonna take the fan clutch off start it and see if our noise changes because what we're doing is we're taking load or tension off of this you know because one thing about water pumps they don't normally go this early unless like you've had a bad fan clutch which this one's had when we first got it fan clutch wouldn't spin up pull it off show a picture of it now there's a junkyard marks on it so it's gone out once already so then they put a used one on and then that one was bad and then you know we put one on that wouldn't unlock ran it was the hottest summer Spokane has ever seen and then we took it off put another one on I don't doubt the bearing took a beating from that so if you do replace a water pump on these it's kind of advised to just replace the fan clutch at it because these don't normally go like that normally you have a water pump go it just starts leaking because the bearing is walked forward to a point to where fluid is coming out the weep hole and let you know you're about ready to shear a shaft 
and it does happen. I don't know if this is a plastic impeller or metal. It's kind of hard to tell in the pictures. I've done a ton of water pumps and in the last few years I've seen them go to plastic impellers which I think is freaking dumb. Because what ends up happening, the antifreeze starts eating out the plastic, you break a fin, and then you start getting this weird pulsation in your upper hose. Alright, you want to be very careful of replacing the radiator, but if you're not replacing the radiator, be very careful so you don't do that. But I don't care because we're replacing it. Alright, let me fish this sucker out. It's easier to come out through the bottom than trying to do it from the top. All right, so we're gonna take a 22 and get on our ratchet here. Pulls down towards driver's side tire. Take it off the alternator. Release the tension. Remove your belt. Alright, if you're going to do this no belt test, just make sure you don't do this for very long because obviously we're not going to be pumping coolant. I do want to show you with all the tension and stuff off the water pump, the kind of noise that I have just from rocking it. That's pretty bad. Yeah, definitely hear the rocks. Okay, let's start it up. Yeah, yeah, water pump. Be quiet now. All right, now to you determine your water pump is toast, um, if you remember from the thermostat video we did a long time ago on this truck, right down there is a peacock. Some of you might have an Allen key like this one. Um, doesn't have an Allen key. This one just uses a wrench. But either way, you got to pop that, drain it. We're going to get the fluid out. I'm going to make life easy on myself, get the shroud out of the way. Just because if we have to do some cleaning, depending on how corrosive things are or not, it's just a lot easier if you have the fan shroud out of the way. So let me get this drained, then we'll go from there. As you're going to see, the fluid's pretty pink, so this is actually a mechanical failure. You know, when parts fail, you, you got to go through and figure out what caused the failure. And this one, I'm going to check the engine hours, but this thing might have a lot of idle time. Could have been bad fan clutch. Could have been just wear and tear as normal. But either way, you still want to find out. On this one, at least knowing the history on it, I'm going to say it's probably bad fan clutches. Because what happens is once the bearing in the fan clutch goes, or it's not working right, it starts causing a little bit of up and down. Well, that up and down starts jackhammering the bearing that's trying to go this way. It starts going up and down. And before you know it, you got a, a pulley doing this. And that's when the seal should start leaking fluid to let you know this thing's about ready to go. Now, I don't know. We might see some seepage when I get the pump off. We'll examine it. While we're waiting for this to drain, let's check the fan clutch. Now, I do see a little bit of... I don't know if that's oil or just dust accumulation, but... I got something going on so we're going to replace this even though it's been replaced we got a warranty on it normally when they go bad they like to blow the rear seal here but the rear seal is not blown so if you're having any leakage it's coming right through the hole right there and spinning out but we got flow this way so I need to look in front of the radiator because it's just in one spot. If I pan up, you'll see right here, it's just one spot. It's not all over like you think it should be. It's very odd to me. Alright, well, this is draining. We'll get, next thing we'll do, we'll get the fan shroud out of the way. And 
look at closer examination of what we got to do next, which is remove a bunch of bolts and put our new pump on, our new Mopar pump. We'll get to that in a minute. Yeah, one thing about the Hemi, it's real, real dark. Let's get some light on the subject. All right, it's going to be kind of hard to see, but there's two bolts we got to remove. We're going to keep the hose attached to the thermostat housing. It is a 13 mil. I don't suggest using standard sockets on this engine. It is a metric based engine. One thing if you remove the hose clamp and do it that way, you have a risk to break the seal here. While we're in here this time, we're going to be replacing these heater hoses. 13 years old, 150,000 miles. It's probably just good, cheap insurance to replace them. So I'm hoping my son got the OEM hoses because they do have a curve and you don't want to kink the heater core line. Some models have a weird system down there with a block. I do believe that's going to be like 14 on or when these became rams. They did have a weird cooler, oil cooler assembly that they were just switching over. I'll tell you right now, the new water pump, this bolt don't go in smooth. It's getting a new bolt. Should not be this hard coming out. At least it wasn't the first time I did it. I always like to do this stuff by hand when I'm dealing with aluminum so you can feel what's going on with your thread. So about two years after we did the thermostat on this, it actually stuck open. So quickly threw one in here. Yeah, he lost his heater right in the middle of winter time. So that's how you can tell you got one that's stuck open, you lose your heat. One stuck closed, you'll overheat. Well, at least you put the uh, leader in the right upright position. Alright, so now that we got this off, we're going to roll this over and then get that out of the way. Put the camera in better position. There's a couple bolts that are holding our shroud on on this particular year. Those are probably fill like a 13. And they are. Let's get those out of the way. Yeah, I'm not sure if I'd want one of these trucks with just electric fan only models. You know, you gotta, with that, everything has to be working perfect. At least with a fan clutch, you, know, you got those issues with the fan clutch not spinning up, but there's a lot worse issues out there than that. Electric fan, I mean, you got what you got, and if you get a clog in the radiator, you can't move enough air. I think this time we're going to pull the clip here since we're replacing the radiator, and I'm going to slide the hose out because I, I don't want to break this. Messy quick. I'm going to slide that back, but I'm going to have to slide that off to get it through there. Huh. We might be replacing the upper hose. Or we might be cutting it. I'll show you why here in a sec. We have a little bit of leakage going on. A little bit of leakage. There we go. Okay, there's a bolt on this side 
and that side we got out. Don't believe there's any on the bottom. We do have a fan control switch on this side. Or it's not going to come off with the electric fan in the way. Alright, so on the bottom there's three plastic clips. I'm just going to show a picture of it now. And then there's one more uh, uke retainer underneath that electric fan. Okay, now she'll come up. See if I can get in here and get a better shot of this wobbling pulley. All right, right there's a water pump pulley. It's pretty bad. You can just feel how crunchy the bearing is. There's a couple different ways you could go about this if you wanted to. You could pull all your hoses, which that I think I'm going to start first. You could get this off. Don't try to take this off with it not bolted to the engine. Because you just never get it off. And that's a 30 foot pound bolt. But might be um, might be because it hasn't been off for a long time. Probably since this engine was built that it's going to fight us. So let's get the big tool out. Oh, not bad at all. It's a good time to check to see if your bearing's any good. There's no serviceable parts in this, so if the spring breaks or the pulley's bad. You just replace it as a whole unit. Alright, keep the bolt with that. I don't know if the camera caught it. I ended up cutting those heater hoses off because they're going to replace them. Um, if you had to in a pinch, you could cut the ends off that are kind of rotted and reuse the hoses. But what ends up happening, if the hoses are bad, you're just going to pop it somewhere else. Okay, what I usually do is I'll take the clamp that came with that hose and I'll just slide it back. Same thing with the bottom. Bottom hose doesn't want to come off none too easy. So we'll see. Yeah, one thing about coolant jobs, they are messy. All right, now we're about ready to start popping bolts. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get a piece of cardboard and I'm going to label each bolt because there's some that are different sizes as far as uh, length goes into that water pump. 